Don, 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 Don. Okay, so let's talk about uh, this amazing piece of technology. This is called the Sports Talk Player and it plays talking baseball cards. Now, how I ran across this, you guys know I'm doing Project Archive, and I was looking for cards that had different photos from the original set that qualified under Project Archive. Well, I ran into these puppies, and you may think, well, oh, this is a normal trading card there. Nope, these are four, like three by five trading cards, pretty big. And uh, they're not just trading cards, they have a record on the back and they play an interview with the player. And in some cases, they actually have clips from games. So I looked into these things. Um, these were a little bit before my time. I grew up in the mid nineties. This obviously was 89. Uh, baseball cards were going crazy and I can't believe people aren't talking about these more. Picked this up for 25 bucks. And the word on the street is, it's hard to find one that actually works. Picked up this one which is brand new put the batteries in and it worked so i want to show you guys exactly what it is how it works it's just an interesting concept and what i'm gonna what i'm gonna do from here on out uh, there's gonna be a fun little thing i do in my videos so the sports talk player uh you have current players at least back in 89 and then you have some legends legends over here and it plays clips from uh from their playing days. So let's go ahead and open up this behemoth. Um, just crazy to me that something from 89 still works. Uh, not many of them do apparently, but this one does. Got the batteries in it already. So uh, this isn't a fresh unboxing, but uh, you always gotta test some stuff before you do an unboxing on YouTube, right? So it comes out just like that. And we'll pop the top off here. And there we go. Look at that styrofoam. Beautiful. All right. So over here we have our cards. These are the ones that uh, are st a starter deck, I guess. Um, then you also have a cleaning pad for your record. Because you got to keep those uh, record parts clean, apparently. The dust really messes up. Uh, if you try to play it with dust on there, it'll, it'll hiccup. And instructions. So Don Drysdale does a voice on there. Joe Torre does a voice on there. And Mel Allen does a voice on that. Mel Allen's voice is pretty high on these. I'm not going to lie. I, I, I laughed a little bit. Um, so <laughs> that's a little how-to on how to you know, get it to work. It's pretty simple. It's just that the electronics are old. And old electronics aren't the most reliable thing in the world. Uh, order forms. So you, I guess you can order um, packs to uh, get other cards. So... That's cool. All right, let's pull the main device out. It just basically looks like one of those old school uh, recorders from back in the day that you could record with tapes. But it doesn't record, it just plays, guys. So let's go ahead and move this out of the way too. And we'll set this up uh, as a backdrop. All right, so important. Sound card must be located on the turntable center pin or will not play correctly. Yeah, and that's a little hard to do. They did not make it easy. Uh, if soundtrack becomes slow or poor, quality is poor, check the batteries. Uh, that shouldn't be a problem. I have lithium ion in here. I probably should have tried to find some alkaline, but all I had was lithium ion. Um, and replace if necessary. For best results, alkaline batteries are recommended. Yeah, sorry. Uh, still works though. Uh, after playing several sound cards, it may be necessary to clean the needle. Do this, gently wipe the needle with a small, soft brush. So, uh, yeah, that's uh, the instructions. And to open it up, you just pull this here. Push it, I should say. And that pops out. And now it's empty. Um, the batteries, this compartment actually pops off. You gotta kind of pull. I was afraid I was going to break it, but this comes down like that. And then your batteries go in there. So let's pop it back in like that. So let's put one in and see what it sounds like, shall we? All right, let's open her up. Okay. Let's put in John Tudor. John Tudor. Now, when you do this, you have to line up, you have to do it by feeling. So you kind of have to move the card until you hear kind of a click and you know the center 
of the record is in the center part of the player. So it sounded like it was there. And uh, let's turn it on, guys, see what we get. Hello, I'm Don Drysdale, and this is Baseball Talk. Today we'll talk baseball with John Tudor. The Boston Red Sox have had a knack of finding talent close to home. They found John Tudor in Peabody, Massachusetts, and in August of 1979, let him pitch in Fenway Park. Warming up in the bullpen, uh, a lot of my friends came to the game unbeknownst to me, and they were down in the bullpen there. Uh, I don't know if you've ever played there. Uh, right over the bullpens is, is where the bleachers are, and they would just stand up there and yelling and screaming and doing that stuff, which, which made it a little more difficult to try and warm up as far as the psyche part, but it made it a lot easier to get loose. By 1985, John was pitching in St. Louis. A 1-7 start became a 21-8 season with a little help from a friend. A buddy of mine, I had to be talking to him one day after I pitched a game against Atlanta to fall to 1-7, and uh, he just told me that we just talked about it a little bit, and he would said that uh, I wasn't bother pausing in my delivery, and that seemed to make all the change in the world, whether to have been a mechanical change or as well as just a little mental change maybe to give me something to fall on and uh, that really turned my season around. That year the Cards made it all the way to the World Series and with their ace on the hill in game seven it should have been a happy ending. It wasn't. Uh, a lot of frustration at the end Don. It was uh, it was tough uh, to, to have had such a great year and and pitched well and uh, you know just about all my playoff and series games and then to get to game seven when it's all on the line and then just nothing went right. I uh, just didn't make any pitches and you know, fell behind a team, you know, four or five to nothing after about four innings, and uh, and Kansas City just was not going to give it up. They had an outstanding pitching staff and just wouldn't give us, just wouldn't give in to us. And you know, we came about as close to winning as as I think any team could come with about a 190 batting average. So, uh, but it was a frustrating end to a to a great season. John finally got a championship ring in 1988 as a member of the Dodgers. For baseball talk, I'm Don Drysdale. I just wanted to play the whole thing so you guys kind of get an idea of how long it takes to get through a whole episode. They're actually decently long. I was very surprised. Um, well, I'd take this out real fast. Um, so that was John Tudor, and that was kind of one of the regular um, regular cards. So basically, it's just an interview. There is the record right there. That's what it played, and that's on every single card. So... Um, I, I am going to pop in another one here. This is a guy that recently passed away, a Hall of Famer, a legend. And uh, this is Tom Seaver. So let's see what Tom has to say. This, this is the last one. Well, I may play one more after this. So let's put in Tom and hit play. Hello there, everybody. This is Mel Allen for Baseball Talk. Saber recalled his world championship season in 1969 with the Miracle Mets. Tom Terrific will tell you it was a year in which everything happened just right. There was just a, uh, a magic of teamwork and unity and, and a magic of uh, believing in ourselves. We thought we could win. I don't think uh, many other people thought we could win, but we knew with a, that we were awfully good, that we had awfully good pitching and awfully good defense, and that we were in every ballgame. And uh, uh, it was just kind of a belief among ourselves that, that we were going to win it. Tom, how did you feel about the acclaim you received after many of your great accomplishments? The important things, the things that mean the most, are the things that you accomplish on the field. It's not, uh, it's not the appearances on the Ed Sullivan Show. Those are just uh, on the periphery of what uh, a professional career is all about. Uh, maybe the fan thinks that, that that has a certain amount of importance, but I think that the individuals involved, the important thing is what we've done on the field and the relationships that we have with each other as teammates uh, and, and the, the combined accomplishments that we have in the field. Those are the things that are most important. And fans, here's announcer Lindsey Nelson making the call on Seaver's 300th win. Seaver bidding for the 300th win of his career to become only the 17th man in the history of the game to reach 300. Ready to work now to Don Baylor. And it's a high fly ball. It should be playable. Nichols is moving over. Nichols is there. The ball game is over. Seaver has won 300. He has become the 17th man in the history of baseball to win 300 games. Seaver will turn it loose now. A 40-year-old Tom Terrific, Tom Seaver. And if you can hear him right, 
right now. His voice is up in such a high key. Only the dogs can understand it. That's the way to bark out a call, Lindsay. Anyways, you guys get the idea. Uh, rest in peace, Tom Seaver, by the way. Uh, the legend lost. Um, just a really cool device. Um, it does play clips from the actual games, mostly on these legend cards. Superstar cards, I guess they're called. Um, yeah, that doesn't sound good. <laughs> Need to be a little more careful when I take these out. Um, anyways, there are a ton of cards. I think there's over 100 different cards you can play on this. And again, it just all plays from that little... You know track on the back there a uh, really cool concept and i saw these i was like how did this exist and me not know about it um but luckily i got one that worked but uh guess what guys i didn't just stop there and of course i went overboard and bought two this one is also brand new uh it has been open to test and it is working so what are, gonna, what are we gonna do with that second one we're gonna give it away to one of you guys free of charge shipped to you for free and uh you're wondering what do i have to do to enter well leave a comment down below that'll be worth one point very easy um just any comment will do doesn't have to have anything in it just leave a comment uh to get 10 points entered and you can do both you can do the comment and what i'm about to say uh to get 11 points to get 10 points all you have to do is make a video response showing off the coolest card in your collection when it comes to uh, the way it performs. So it could be one of those old CD-ROM cards they had back in the 90s that went in your t little CD-ROM CD tray. It could be one of the cards that folds out and pops up and makes like a figurine. It could be anything that's kind of functional like that. If you don't have any of those cards, go ahead and show off your favorite design, maybe some kind of like... Uh, uh, metal card from back in the 90s one of the uh, finest cards that had the film that you rip off just something that kind of manual to do with it either is etched you can see the etchings in the card something cool like that um, so show off your favorite card mention this giveaway obviously and that will get you 10 points and uh, also in your tags put sports talk zane uh, make it a hashtag that's all one word so hashtag sports talk zane uh, that way I can find the video. So, yeah, if you want to win this, enter, guys. Again, one point for a comment down below. Ten points if you make a video response. And I will pick on, uh, I think, random number picker. There might be a better method. I'm going to check that out. But uh, each entry will be put in, and we'll have a winner in, let's say, a month. Let's do this in a month. We'll, uh, we'll figure out who gets this beast. All right, guys, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed walking through history with me. I've got a lot more cards to go through. Um, I do want to tell you a little bit about what I'm going to do with this. Uh, these do qualify for my archive project, if you do watch my channel. And I'm going to be sending them these off to get signed. And each time I get one back that was signed, I'm going to play it on the show with my sports talk player. So, yeah, adding another level to the show. It's always fun. Anyways, guys, uh, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the videos. Uh, get your entries in, and you take care, all of you autograph addicts.